The Adventures of Detectives Black and Blue. is Gain Whitman speaking. In a moment you are to hear the first episode in a series of original entertainments featuring the world's dumbest and uh, luckiest detectives, Black and Blue. We promise you thrills, suspense, humor, and action in their adventures, and we invite you to follow the program regularly over the station to which you are now listening. As the curtain rises on the first act, the scene is the shipping department of a large wholesale grocery house in Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> The Adventures of Detectives Black and Blue. Hey, Black. What do you want, Blue? It's time to eat your lunch. Come on, I'm hungry. Twenty-six and nine's thirty-five, and three more's thirty-eight. And twenty-seven more off on that anchor line. Oh, boat. come on and eat. Dog gone. Now I'm all mixed up again. Say, if they never make another pound of sugar, that'll be soon enough for me. Where's my lunchbox? Here it is. Sit down. What's the matter? Your sugar tally off again? Yeah, I'm short 19 sacks and a case of domino. Can't understand it. Them last two cars checked in perfect. Seems to me this sugar shortage is getting worse than it ever was before. Say, Black, how long you been with the house? Well, you know. I come with Brownstone and Parker same time you did three years ago. That's right. You started on the 17th of January and I come just two days after. Funny how we got acquainted, wasn't it? Over at Mrs. Webster's boarding house on Lake Avenue. Remember me losing one of my cufflinks? Yeah, and me finding it in my hash. Take one of these apples, Blue. I only want one. Thanks, old pard. Now, look at here. What I want to know is, why do we get along okay until about six months ago, and then we ain't had nothing but trouble ever since with shortages? Well, I'll tell you. It all dates back to the time they made this Roy Bowman the warehouse foreman. I bet this house is losing a hundred thousand a year on these shortages. And yet nobody can't seem to do nothing about it. Now, look here, Blue. I've been doing some deducting. Deducting? What's that? Oh, that's the way big guys like Sherlock Holmes and all them top-notch detectives work. Deducting is taking away something from something else that you haven't got, and the remainder is what you have. Well, it sounds cuckoo to me. Now, listen, I'll explain. There's four sides to this grocery warehouse, ain't there? Yeah. Well, anybody can deduct that. All right. Now, look. On the front of the building is the offices. Nobody can't take merchandise out that way. That's right. Now, on the north side of the building is the railroad tracks, and nobody ain't going to drive any truck down the northern Pacific tracks, are they? I'm right with you, old kid. How about the south side? Well, being the shipping clerk, you ought to be able to deduct that one for yourself without me helping you. There's only the outgoing delivery trucks can get in that driveway, and at night the gates are closed and locked. Also, the warehouse doors. Well, then that just leaves one way for the stuff to be stolen. That's just what I'm deducting. What's to stop somebody in a small boat sneaking up in the slip along this side by the dock here, loading her up and lambing out into the bay? Now, that's where you're all wet. Because the warehouse doors is locked on the dock side also. No, sir. Let me tell you something. I've been checking up on the dates of some of the shortages. Every one happens on a night that we got a steamer in. And then what? Just this. Roy Bowman gave orders a long time ago that whenever a ship might come in, in the night, we was to leave the dockside doors unlocked. What do you know about that? 
Gee, that's a pipe, Black. All we gotta do now is come down here some night and watch. Listen, let's come down here tonight and lay around. The tyrannist is due in here sometime tonight. I got the bills of laden right here on the desk. I'm gonna be right with you. Checkers, don't let them hunkies hear us. Tonight at midnight, we'll sneak down on number one dark alley. Keep your head down, Blue. They're hauling in the gang plank. Gee, ain't a ship pretty at night? Look at all them rows of lights. Sure, that's the staterooms. Boy, wouldn't you like to be in one of them? Pounding your ear? I'll say I would. I never did get enough traveling. Them people on that tie nest are there. They wake up in the morning out of sight of land, headed for Buffalo. And we'll be headed for the little old job, carrying our lunch pails. Buffalo, eh? Say, ain't that Ni- Niagara Falls sure, black? Sure, you might say it's practically the same place. I know a fellow that went there once on his wedding trip. Well, I don't see no chance of me and you ever taking any wedding trips or riding on a steamboat or nothing else. As long as we're pushing a truck around a grocery warehouse. Oh, well, the fella hadn't ought to be pessimistic, Blue. All you gotta do is save your money, and pretty soon, with the interest and the sinking funds and everything, you'll have a wad of dough. I can't save any money. No wonder. You're always falling for one of them slick book agents. Oh, I ain't bought so many books. Anyway, I ain't bought so many lately. Oh, no, of course not. What'd you do last month? You signed your life away for a set of U.S. Grant's memories. I've been at Brownstone and Parker's for three years, and I ain't never seen nobody promoted for memorizing Grant's memories. Well, listen, I've got a feeling that if we don't find out who's swiping this sugar, we're going to get promoted downwards. Yeah, and outwards. Well, we may find out tonight. Say... There's the officer going up on the bridge. He's got a swell job. Yeah. Gold braid and everything. They get the dough, too, them boys. Look. There she goes. All right. Let go of her. Let go. Stop at the wheel. Hard over. Hard to stop, sir. Hold on your breast lines. Hold on to the bow. All right, Mr. Wilkins, come and start slowly. That's good. Stop her. Amidships the wheel. Amidships, sir. Say, Blue, that fella on the bridge knows his stuff. See how he holds her in at the bow until he works the ship out into the channel. Let go of the bow. On your line. Everything clear, stand, Mr. Wigan? All clear, sir. Quarter speed of stern. Watch her at the wheel. Quarter a little. Quarter a little, sir. Whiz. Ain't it dark here now after all them lights on the ship? Hush. Don't talk so loud. You can't tell who's hiding around here. Say, don't that water look black and ugly? Gee, I wished I was in my nice, comfortable bed. That's what I wish. Well, I've been kind of thinking myself. We ain't sure that anybody is going to steal anything tonight. Yeah, and that's just it. Supposing they don't. We're a couple of saps sitting out here back of this pile of boxes at half past one in the morning. Blue, I feel kind of nervous about this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so getting so cold I could sit on a hot stove. So am I. Maybe after all, we are a couple of saps losing our sleep. Yeah, and maybe losing our jobs, too. What do you mean? Well, look, supposing we got caught here and got reported to the GM. He'd think we're the guys that's doing the stealing. I never thought of that. Say, that... Roy Bowman, he'd help the idea along. I ain't hankering for no bullet in my head, either. Say, if it only hits you in the head, it wouldn't do you no harm. Uh, What do you say? I say, let's lamb out of here. Well, you go first. Go ahead. I'll be right alongside of you. All right. Duck down low now. Stick right close to me. I might fall down or something. Hey, Black, 
Wait a minute. Listen. What's the matter? Listen, I tell you. It's some boat coming up the slip. You're right. I can hear the motor. Look. There's something moving right out there in the channel. Just like a black shadow. They got no lights or nothing. It's them crooks. Flatten yourself down. Look. You can peek out between these boxes. They're coming up to our dock. Say, Black. They'll shoot the ears off of us if they catch us here spying on them. They're climbing out on the dock. Yeah. And now, now, they're opening the warehouse doors. One of them's got a searchlight. They're taking sacks of sugar out and dropping them down into their boat. And that's where some of Brownstone and Parker's dough is going, too. I can't understand what our night watchman is doing. Where is he? Why don't he stop him? Say, Black, do you think we ought to rush out and stop him? Yeah, I think we ought to, but we ain't gonna do it. Why, them fellas will have gats. What chance we got? That's just what I was thinking. I was getting ready to hold you if you was going to start out. Say, I don't need no holding. You hold yourself. Boy, I'm anchored right to this spot. Wait a minute. I want to get a look at that feller's face when that searchlight goes on again. There. Do you know him? Pipe down, I tell you. Wait a minute now. They're getting ready to pull out. Stoop down till we get off the dock. Whew. That was kind of a nervous strain, Blue. I said it, old kid. Hush. Who's that coming around the corner of the building? Flatten out against this pile head. Hush. Look out you don't knock this over. Somebody's left a tin can sitting here. Look, he's lighting a pipe. Gee whiz, it's the night watchman, Black. Listen, Blue, you know who that fella was that I saw when they was loading the sugar? The fella they turned the searchlight on? No. What fella? The fella helping them feed. No, who was it? Was our night watchman. Good night. For the love of Mike. Now you've knocked that tin can off in the pile head. Go. Come on, Blue. He's shooting at us. I'm leaving. Come on yourself. You ain't leaving me. <laughs> to listen to the next episode of the thrilling and amusing adventures of Detectives Black and Blue over this station. 